we have video nodes on computing with fractions. So I have four computation problems. First one being multiplication, two-thirds times three-fourths. Two-thirds of three-fourths. That's basically what that means. I'm taking part of three-fourths. A fraction is part. Part of three-fourths. So first of all, is that going to be less than three-fourths or more than three-fourths? Less. less. Part of three-fourths means I have less than that. So you know if your answer is more than one, it's wrong. Right? Okay, Janice, let me give you a quick set of notes for this. Ready? Multiply across. Simplify. And there you go. That's pretty easy. So here's your notes to write down. Write them down. Multiply the numerators. Then multiply the denominators. What's your last step? The bump Simplify. Simplify. All right. Now we're at four-fifths divided by one-half. Again, this is easy. We do not divide fractions. We change them to a multiplication problem. So, same change flip. The next problem is four-fifths divided by one-half. So this time, what this means is how many halves are in four-fifths. So let's pretend this is money. Four-fifths is, is like almost a dollar, right? Yes. Half is like 50 cents. How many 50 cent pieces are in a dollar? Two. Two. The answer should be approximately two. two. That's what division means. How many of these are in this? All right, there you go. Oh. Remember how to do this, Wyatt? I know you're pretty smart, too. I know. Excellent. So he keeps the first fraction the same. Good work. Yep, he knows to change division to multiplication. And he changes the second fraction to its reciprocal. Now it's a multiplication problem that Janet has already shown us how to do. So we know we multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and simplify. Excellent work, Wyatt. So our next problem is two-thirds plus one-fourth with the Lexus. So we know that two-thirds is more than a half, let's say about 75 cents. We're adding a fourth, which is like a quarter. So that would be approximately a dollar. So we have a little estimate of adding. All right, go ahead, Alexis. So Alexis, right off the bat, knows that she should write it vertically, up and down. Okay. Oh, Alexis knows that she has to change those fractions to make common denominators. Now, Alexis, I want you to show how did you get those denominators. How did you get right here in three? I multiply Because you have to multiply top and bottom. What's three over three? One. one. And one times one fourth is still one fourth. I just cut it up into more pieces. It's still the same size. Okay, we want that line there. Continue, Alexis. So then Alexis adds the numerators, keeps the denominator the same, and you can't simplify. So, here's our steps. First step, make common denominators. All right? Make common denominators. Then, create your equivalent fractions. Right? That's where one-fourth 
fourth equals three twelfths, two thirds equals eight twelfths. Okay, next step, add the numerators. Next step, keep the denominators the same. Or denominator, since it's the same already. That's because that denominator tells you the size of the fraction. That doesn't change at all. There's not 12 things. It's been cut into 12 pieces. And finally, the last step always is... Simplify! Simplify. Alright, so there you go again. Simple stuff. Easy stuff. So our last problem is 5 eighths minus 1 half. We know that we're going to do this the same way we did addition except for adding. We're going to subtract. Alright, Edwin. So first thing he knows to do is he rewrites it up and down. Okay, menos, excellent thing. So we have this. Okay, so now we have to make common denominators, Edwin. Okay, so remember we have to change these into new fractions, Edwin. So where, what's your common denominator going to be? Excellent thing, 16. Both of them have to be 16. This denominator here has to be 62. Okay, what's your numerator? That's lengthy because 8 times 2 is 16, so 5 times 2 is 10. There you go. That's because 2 times 8 was 16, so 1 times 8 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16, so 5 times 2 is 10. Okay, now what are you going to do, Edwin? Uh, let's do it down here. That's why we already wrote it. Do it down at the bottom. And down here. Good. We keep the denominator the same. There you go. And then what's the last step, everybody? Simplify. 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 Excellent. Thank Good job. Good job. Video notes on graphing linear equations using a function table and then later on I'm going to give you a line on a graph and you're going to create the linear equation itself. So this is uh, some extra notes from what we've been studying in class. So first of all I have this linear equation. I know it's a linear equation because it doesn't have any exponents. This equation is already in the form of slope intercept which is y equals mx plus b. So I see that minus there. I'm going to go ahead and do same change opposite like I always do. Later on, if you pay attention to what we're doing in these notes, we're going to be able to take this equation and without using a function table, graph it just by understanding slope intercept form. Well, let's right now just use the function table. We know this is x. This is our function right here, so y equals 3x plus negative 4. This will be our y-coordinates, and this will be our ordered pair. We're going to use 0, 1, and 2 as our x-coordinates. We know we call these the inputs or the domain. So now let's go ahead and substitute. So I have 3 times 0 plus negative 4. I have 3 times 1 plus negative 4. And I have 3 times 2 plus negative 4. So 3 times 0 is 0, plus negative 4 is negative 4. That will give us 0, negative 4 on our graph. 3 times 1 is 3, plus negative 4 is negative 1. So that will give us 1, negative 1 on our graph. We have two points, so I could graph, but we use that third point, like we already talked about, to make sure we don't make any mistakes. So 3 times 2 is 6, plus negative 4 is positive 2. So our third point is... 2, 2. So let's go ahead and graph these. So 0, negative 4 will be right here. 1, negative 1 will be right here. And 2, 2 will be right here. And of course they, well, I'm sorry, that's not 2, 2. Notice that didn't line up. 
2, 2 is right there. So now we go ahead and using a straight edge, we're going to graph it. And there is our linear function in picture form. Here's our linear function in symbolic form, and here's our linear function in a table. Three ways to show the same thing. Now what I want you to notice as I highlight is that when x is 0, we have our negative 4 is our y-coordinate. Notice that is our y-intercept, which is our b. So in slope-intercept form, b is your y-intercept. We're going to use that later to graph. You notice we have a pattern here in our y's. I'm adding 3 each time. Notice that when I do my slope triangle, I go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1. I go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1. We call those the slope triangles. Those are our steps. Notice that that's right there. 3 is the same as 3 over 1. Well, the number in front of the x, the m, is our slope. So slope is m, which is our rise over our run, which we can use to create steps and make a line on a graph. All right, so now let's do the same thing in the next one. So I have my linear equation, y equals negative 2x plus 4. There's no exponent. So I have my x, I have my function, I have my y, and I have my ordered pair. Okay, we know these are inputs. We're going to use 0, 1, 2. Okay, we're going to substitute 0 in for x. We're going to substitute 1 in for x. We're going to substitute 2 in for x. Okay, we know from the last problem that when x is 0, I'm given the y-intercept. So negative 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. So 0, 4 on our graph, right there, we already know is our y-intercept. Remember, it's that number in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. b is your y-intercept. It's the place the line crosses the y-axis. Okay, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 4 is positive 2. So I have 1, 2, and then negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so I have 2, 0. So let's plot these points, 1, 2, over 1, up 2, 2, 0. Notice that this point on the line, on the x-axis, is our x-intercept. And what happens when y is 0 is we get that point. So let's just think that, well, a little bit more about that. When x is 0, I'm given my y-intercept right here. When y is 0, I'm given my x-intercept. Just opposites. Let's go ahead and graph that. And there is our function in pictorial or graphic form. Okay, let's again look at our y-intercept, 0, 4, which is right there. And now let's look at our slope, right there. Put a 1 underneath. So, if we started here, we went up 2, but over to the left, 1. So there's your rise over your run. The rise was 2. The run was negative 1. 2 over negative 1 is the same as negative 2. Okay? All right, this time we're going to just use our equation to graph. We're not going to do a function table. So first of all, is this in the form of y equals mx plus b? Sure it is. There's a number in front of the x, and then we're adding, or we could subtract another number. So from those past two problems, we know that this number right here is our y-intercept. That's a point on our graph. Right there is positive 1 on the x or on the y-axis. Simple. Now we need another point. 
Well, we know that this number right here in front of the x is m, or our slope. Again, to review, slope is rise over run. The rise over the run makes our steps. So, 2 over 1 in this case would be up 2 and over 1. And since it's positive, it will go to the right. Up 2, right there, over 1. Up 2, right there, over 1. We want to have at least three points. They line up. And there's our graph. Now, if I want to find my x-intercept, notice that I'm not sure where it crosses right there. Somewhere about negative half. So what did we say earlier right here? When y is 0, I'm given my x-intercept. Right there. 0 or 2, 0. So let's do that here. Let's take our equation, y equals 2x plus 1. Let's substitute 0 for the y and solve for the x, and we'll have our x-intercept. I have to get the numbers on one side, so opposite of 1 is negative 1. They cancel, so I'm left with negative 1 equals 2x. Okay, I have 2x, so I'm going to divide by 2. So all that work you did on solving equations now has to be used here. And x equals negative 1 half, and that's what I thought. So the x-intercept was negative 1 half, and we know the y-intercept was positive 1. Okay, this time I'm going to create a linear equation from the graph. So here's our graph. So we need our equation in the form of y equals mx plus b. So I need two points, or two letters fill in. I need the b, and I need the m. So, first of all, the m is the y-intercept. Where does it cross the y-axis? Well, right there. Well, what point is that? It's 0, negative 3. So our y-intercept is negative 3. So y equals blank x, and now it's negative 3. This we know is our slope. So to find slope on a graph, we use a slope triangle, rise over run. So to get from this point to another point I identify, I have to find it, like right there. See, these would be the points. So I go up 1 over 4. And that's to be the same here, up 1 and over 4. So rise is 1, run is 4. Rise is 1, run is 4. So slope equals rise over run. In this case, up 1 over 4. So... That's the number I put in front of the x. So now if I want to rewrite it, y equals 1 fourth x, either plus negative 3 or minus 3. It doesn't matter. And of course, we're going to go over this a lot more, but that's uh, an intro. So good work.